But Rakaya, give everybody your handles and how they can get a hold of you, and then, we, and then we're going to post them up on the screen also. But just okay. Want... So the salon suite. I'm at Sola Salon Suites. I'm in Suite 32, and that is in the Alliance Plaza in the city of Fort Worth. I am there seven days a week. You can book online. I am on Instagram and Facebook at Rakaya Taylor, my first and last name. And the booking links are in my bio. All right, now we're back with segment two. Now we got Rakaya from Keep It Natural. And then we have her husband, John. And I'm about to start this right off. Get this. Rakaya, you said something good when the camera was off. So tell me... Tell me that first intro when you met when you met your husband. You know, y'all been married seven years. So tell me, tell me what you said off camera. Well, when I met him seven years ago, he was telling me he was about to retire. I'm at my 20 years. I'm about to throw in my papers. I'm about to retire. And I considered that he was in process of that. But it is seven years later and he's still active duty. <laughs> they gonna have to sure. kick him out, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. So, John, what you got to say for yourself? Um, you know, coming from where we came from, um, it just it just it fits me. It was a calling, you know. So I love what I do. So yeah, it's been seven years. I hit twenty seven years in the Marine Corps today. Um, I'm a command sergeant major, and yeah, been been all over the place. But I love what I do. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm taking it, uh, Georgia. Y'all met in Georgia. I'm taking that, right? Was in Georgia. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, so John, she's you meet her. She's a business owner. She's running the business. So, just what was life like that with you? You know, now, what you know now you have somebody, especially in the military world. It's a lot of traveling, a lot of uh, moving places and things like that. Now you have somebody that's settled in one location. What was that? What was your thought process of, of uh, dealing with a well-established businesswoman, especially being in the Marines? Yeah, I, I, um, you know, I, I'll be honest and go out there and um, say it was it was all new to me, right? We, um, I was stationed in Albany, Georgia. Um, she would, her and her salon, she was working up in Atlanta, Georgia. I was up, I came up for a weekend to help a friend out work a um, job and um, the job that that he was working was her job. So <laughs> she had hired him and he sort of hired me because, you know, of our friendship, or whatever. And um, I came up to help out and I think we hit it off from the first meeting. So it, it was all new to me. Um, prior relationships, it wasn't a businesswoman um, at all, you know, to her caliber. So I was very impressed with her knowledge, what she was doing on her own, um, how she was running the business, managing life, managing, you know, having two girls at the time. So very impressed with her, her drive and determination. Okay, I saw you raise your eyebrows when he, when he said we hit it off for the first sight. I know you was looking like, who is this, who is this guy trying to brush up on me? <laughs> yeah, we, we have our version of the raising the start. <laughs> Um, My version. I definitely, um, our mutual friend is a chef and I gave a Mother's Day brunch in my home for my family and close clients and things like that. And it was a beautiful brunch. We had everything, literally, from desserts to main courses to side dishes, everything. And um, they're best friends and he was helping him. And before the event started or whatever, we definitely had we conversed, we were talking and everything. Um, by the end of the evening, we ended up following each other on social media. And I was the forward one. I definitely was, I told him, I said, someone be taking me out. Like, <laughs> and my birthday was like the next couple of days. So I was, yeah. um, there was a lot going on personally at that time. And I think I just wanted company. Never would have thought I was gaining a husband, never. Never, never. Right, so, so, so John, so she jumped in your DMs, huh? Yeah, you know, that's that's the way it could be happens, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I um I definitely found her very um I was very intrigued by by her and how uh, much of a businesswoman she was, right? She she had her home was beautiful and all of these um women was there and she was she was throwing it on, you know, she was taking care of her 
employees. So all of her stylists was there. Um, their mothers were there. Um, her her mother, her uh, grandmother, like um, every everyone was there. Um, it was very much so family oriented, whatever. But it was her giving back to her um, to her workers, you know, or or friends, really. Like, mm-hmm. like it, it was a it was a a ran business, very organized and everything. But um, there was it was a family there, so very intriguing in that. So um, during the course of the evening, I, I continued to take care of her, as she was running around taking care of everybody else and making sure everybody was. Um, you know, taken care of, I focused on her. Like, I wanted to make sure that she was good. So, and, and she's seen that yeah. and the type of person I was. Yeah. And, and yeah, she, she just had to jump in my DM. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, then she jumped in DMs. That, there you go. There you go. All right. So, um, now transitioning. So, now next thing you know, you know, y'all meet up. Now we gonna jump to y'all being married. So now, Rakai, you're you're married to somebody that's in the Marines. You know that the where you met him at and where your business established at. You know that's probably not. Even though he said he was retiring in five months, uh, <laughs> that that's probably not gonna be the last place you stay. Um, how what was that mindset for you as a businesswoman? Um, just a little background on things. When I met Jay, I was selling one of my properties, and I was in. 70% of closing down my business. So I was closer to knowing that the next chapter of my life did not include having a staff that I ran and the business that I ran and things like that. So mentally, I was super attached to my business and to the professionals that worked for me. I think I was more so at the time, a little afraid of shutting down my business, which would have benefited me, my children, my mother the most. I didn't want to let my staff down. So when I met Jay, he came in at a time where I really was ready for a change. And I didn't really know really what that change was. I just knew having this business was chewing me up and spitting me out. It was hard on me. It was, it was, it was weighing on me to where I just knew it wasn't for me anymore. And I ran my business with my heart. I did not run it with a business mind. So when I met Jay, um, he was a breath of fresh air because I really, I was just ready for something different. I wasn't dating at the time. I wasn't in anything serious. Um, I don't even think I really was looking for anything. I just knew career-wise, I wanted to stay in the hair business. There's nothing I'd rather do, but I knew I didn't need that business anymore. So um, as far as him coming in, I think I lost my train of con- the question. Do you mind reiterating the question? Because I had to give that background. Sure. No, I got you. I got you. So when, when you know, he been in the military and then he, I'm going to say lied, but uh, but when he said he was going to retire and then he knew he was going to have to uproot from there with him staying in, you know, what was that, you know, mindset like of knowing that, hey, the business is changing. I'm going to have to go somewhere else. If I'm, you know, choose to stay married to him, I'm going to have to go somewhere else to make this thing happen. Okay. So with that little bit of background, I was 70% ready for change. I had never been in a relationship where I was truly led by anyone, really truly led by anyone. And we got married and I still didn't let go of my business. I traveled from North Carolina to Georgia almost weekly to my business by plane, by car. And that was all because I was so attached. And I definitely felt like when he asked me to move to North Carolina, I had, I was 50-50. I said, well, no, I'm going to come there when I come there and I'm going to be back in Georgia when I'm in Georgia. But then when he got orders to Japan, we both made a decision to, to shut down, keep it natural and take a leap on faith where my career could end up. So, um, I did. I took a leap on faith and I really just kind of felt like, take my hand, lead me. And that's where I am currently, just really understanding that um, I work well with Jay and understanding how I can do things. Um, I wish I had met him 20 years ago. So the business, the business would probably still be thriving. It would be better um, it, if I knew what I was doing. Cause he wouldn't let me run it with my heart so much. He would have had the business mind and I would have had the little heart in it, but um, 
him coming along made a difference for the better. Long, like long story short. Yeah, so to tie in the North Carolina piece. So, um, you know, in, in the military, you sort of get orders every three years. So um, I was there for that year where where we dated. And then I got orders to North Carolina. Um, we got married. And, you know, like she said, she ran she continued to run a business. I believed in the business. I believed in her. Um, I didn't want her to shut it down. So she had told me her thoughts about closing it down or trying something um, new. And um, I know she wants to teach and stuff like that. And I was like, the business is good. You got us, you know, um, I won't say it's, it's great to have heart in the game, but it got to, you know, you got to have heart in it for you too. So don't lead it with your just your heart, leave it with, um, the um the business aspect of it as well. So she she continued to run it. And yeah, when when North Carolina came, she ended up coming over there, working there, and then yeah, that transition to Japan. So John, you said that it was intriguing um seeing how she was managing her business and everything. Someone like you with the rank that you hold in the Marine Corps, was it admiring for you to see a woman that was able to manage her business the way that she was? Impressive. Absolutely. There's no, there's no other um, way to put it. Um, the things where I think that, and I think it's important in any relationship to co best compliment the person that, you, that you're with. And um, the fact that I think that I, I was um, more not on the heart side, I guess, you know, more on the firm, firm side. Um, I was very impressed with she, what she did, what she had how she was doing it, how she was doing it all by herself. And I was, I said the same thing, like, wow, you know what? You know, we're, we're a pair now. We'll, we'll do this together and we'll take this to next level, to the next level, to the next level. So yeah, I was, I was, yes, I was very impressed on um, how she did it. When, you know, the structure of how she did it and how she got to where she was at that point, even, um, you know, when I learned her story of not having a license and, the drive that it took to get to where she was. Like, um, I'm not sure how far, you know, back she went with it, but from being on music tours with um, a lot of the celebrities from, I think, the Up and Smoke. Up and Smoke tour, tour with, with, with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Nocturno, and Eminem. It was the Up and Smoke tour, what was that, 2000? And she, one or two? She did it all herself. Mm -hmm. You know, going going to those hotel suites and stuff like that, and I, I was looking for someone like that in my life. And she she compliments me. She takes care of me, um, our home, our business as well. So um, I then I think I compliment her as well as keeping things and 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 intact and then uh, on the right track to lead things as a business and not just with the heart. And so, Rakaya, for you, I have a question. Um, you guys have done a lot of traveling, obviously, especially to Japan. Have you been able to maybe specialize in what you do, being able to travel to different countries and serve different people, different ethnicities and things of that sort? Absolutely. Um, being in Japan brought on a new caliber of understanding. There's a lot of hair regulations in the military. And I took, you know, he to understand what those requirements and regulations were. And I think I was really focused on bringing more femininity to the actual Marines and sailors that I had access to. And I really implemented making sure that they knew how to transition from active duty to feminine on the days that they didn't have to be in military attire and things like that. I really went through explaining a lot of these young girls had only had their mother as their stylist, and now they're all the way in Japan with a professional cool. and knows how to really get into their hair. So I did a lot of teaching, not to mention everyone who sits in my chair is a student, period. And all those young ladies, they have the military standpoint on the forefront of their lives. So when they sat down in the chair, I had to really bring them back to the femininity and understanding that you're still a woman. And your hair is a lot of confidence. Um, so me knowing what the military requires of their active duty, I would really show them like how products work for your texture. 
how tools work for your texture, how to maintain this really nice polished look. And then on Friday night, we're going to turn up. We're going to let it down and we're going to let it breathe. So um, I had a cool little name for myself like out there. I really did. I had the opportunity of, you know, talking to um, the Commandant and Marine Corps. Yes. Um, so. I definitely had a substantial amount of his time conversing with him about hair in the in the military and just that little area for Iwakuni, Japan. I feel that the people that I touch, I think I changed their perspective of how to be an active duty military personnel and a real woman, you know, not, not that not real women, but how to be feminine outside. Cause it's just, unfortunately, it's not the most feminine approach when you're in, when you're active duty, it's not. Right, right. Um, so yeah, as far as meeting with the commandant, I told him, I said, you know, there's a lot of things happening with hair care that needs to change and hair requirements that needs to change. I think he would have more productive women doing, being better active duty if they felt better about themselves. And that's a long story. So I understand that. Um, so before, before I transition all the way to Japan, I know Alex, you went there going back to the business in Georgia, besides the fact of, you know, the, you know, the move, you know, now, now you're married to a Marine boo, but um, <laughs> now you're married to a Marine. Um, so what aspects of the business you said, because you was already at 70% in the uh, process of shutting it down. So what aspects of the business first I'm going to ask Rakaya that you didn't like about the business that made you want to shut it down. And then Jay, what was uh, some of the aspects of, about the business that you didn't like that, you know, confirmed her uh, intuition to shut it down? Rakaya first. Um, my decision in wanting to shut it down was because, you know, guys, I never really ran my business like a business. I had professionals that I loved my staff and I worked with them in the same building and we turned on the same light and we used the same shampoo bowls and things like that. I never ran my business as a business. I tried to make everybody feel like an independent owner in one establishment. I never wanted to make them feel like they worked for me. And unfortunately, as good as I felt doing that part, it just wasn't a real business. And I, and it was starting to weigh on me because I didn't have, I didn't have it in me to say, hey guys, I want this done like this. I see how other businesses are doing that. Let me do that. Um, I was nervous of my staff wanting to be their own boss. So I tried to make sure that they all felt like a boss. And at the end of the day, that's not how you run a business, not in this industry. So I needed to shut it down just to understand I'm not really benefiting from this business. I'm working with people that I love. And that's what I did for, what, 13 years? I had that shop. I literally worked with people that I loved. And they paid their booth rent, most of them. And when they didn't pay their booth rent, I never had any, you know, there was a lot going on in my business that I just, I, I, I did it with my heart, every aspect of it. Um, and where they fell short, I picked up a hundred percent and I kind of was worn out, but I never spoke on it. I just kind of knew that it wasn't nobody's fault but my own. And I didn't want to have a business on that caliber. So I knew it was time. Yeah. What's your insight on it? Um, yeah, I've I seen everything that she said. Um, it was just like that, uh, where some of the pieces would fall short. She would just pick it up, you know. And um, as she was trans, we was transitioning to now um, wanting to have a family and build um, financial, you know, gain and success. And um, you can't, you can't, you can't leave with your heart first, in my opinion to get there the way that, you know, it was being done. Um, it's okay to have a heart and it's okay to care and it's okay to love, but because you run it like a business don't mean that you don't care or you don't love, you know? You have to um, be able to look out for yourself so you can look out for the other uh, people. So her idea to shut Absolutely. it down, um, I was, you know, I think supportive of it, you know, so, um, but I, I really believed it, um, so much to the point of, uh, I think, you, you know, I've, I've always sort of aspired to be 
a um, JROTC instructor when I got out of the military because at the time I was volunteering and I was helping in the community and stuff like that. So I wanted to probably go into a school and just help educate the um, the youth, you know. So when we got together, I won't say that that changed, but the way she ran the business and how much heart she had into it helped me honestly changed my career path on where I wanted to go. So I stayed in a little bit longer, uh, well, seven years or more, whatever. But um, <laughs> but um, I, I believe in it so much to where this is what I want to do when I get out, just to continue to support her and her dreams the way that she supported me and mine um, over the course of the years. So, yeah, I, I mean, I supported it, but I, I believed in it too. And she kept it longer. I was like, hey, no, let, like, look, let me let me um, help or give some advice in some of these areas, and let's let's see what it can do, you know. And um, mm -hmm. you know, the military being the military, when they gave those orders, transition, you know, we, we had a decision to make. So, which I think end up helping helping out a great deal. You know, so. Honestly, you know, remember the plaza got bought and they were going back and we were, it was time to renew the lease. So we mm -hmm. had an issue. Jay really, and my staff, Jay and my staff made me really realize that it was a savable situation. The salon could have been a real good profitable and, you know, thing for myself and Jay. Now, the when it was time to renew the lease, there were some things going on in the business electrically and the, the plaza was very old. You know, it was created in the 80s. We were having some issues of deterioration and things like that. And when it was time to renew the lease, what they needed and what we needed didn't really match up. And it just yeah. happened to have peak of COVID. So we decided to just shut it down because we couldn't come to an agreement on what we needed to renew. And they couldn't make changes to, to you know, for me. So um, me and the owner of that plaza, um, we talk still. We're, we're still in good hands. It's, it's, it, it wasn't any ill will. It's just we knew it wasn't something that I should have done. But my staff and Jay, they believed in me and we... He turned it around for me maybe the last year and a half. It was doing better. My staff was doing what they're supposed to do. Um, we had redecorated a little bit. So it was going up. But when it was time to renew, we knew my shampoo bowls needed to have different plumbing. Um, we had a issue with um, just some uh, extermination issues and stuff like that. We were having some stuff. So it was that thing that we decided, you know what? We're going to take a leap on faith and go take this international location for three years. We had financial goals to reach. We had we had all kinds of things that we were going to do in three years to take this break. Mm -hmm. and, I, and and that's what it, it just panned out at the same time. But that's how, you know, Rakaya means the fortunate one. That's what my name means. It's Swahili. And it means the fortunate one. Like things just happen like this for me. It just it just happens all the time. It just lines up and it adds up. Mm -hmm. So last question that I have for you guys would be, what is the end goal or what are you guys working towards right now in your lives with where you are today? Mm, personally, for me, I aspire to teach. I would like to, um, I'm in the state of Texas and here in the state of Texas, um, the high schools offer an academy of cosmetology. I think that's what I want to do. And I'm actually drinking from a cup that a friend gave me, I don't know if you guys can read it, but it says, the one who, the one where Rakaya becomes a cosmetology instructor. I'm not sure if y'all can see that. Okay. Um, it has been years of people telling me, you are ordained to teach, you should teach. People who have just met me here in Texas, you should be teaching. Um, I know a lot about hair care. I know a lot about this industry. Um, that's what I think I'm going to end up doing for sure. And our 10 year old wants to be a cosmetologist. So okay. I have a whole empire to create for her. So between raising a cosmetologist, like my mom raised me and teaching other professionals, my way of cosmetology is kind of where I know that's next. Okay. Yeah. So I would say, um, supporting her in, in that dream. Um, I've, Done my um my time my time. I think that you know retirement is is um on on the coming and um <laughs> I, I, I want to see her dreams come true because there's nothing that she wouldn't 
um, do for me. I want to ensure that I support her in all those endeavors. You know, she, again, left and put things on a, I won't say the back burner, but I would say took the leap on faith. Um, it, it, it was a lot to be able to close down that salon and start over from zero in North, in North Carolina. And then I get selected for a Sergeant Major and then to stop what she just grew in, in North Carolina and moved to Japan. So I think that though did add a, um, a title to her name. She, uh, she's now an international um, stylist and there yeah, was very sought after, believe it or not. I, and I can't, I can't believe it. And she, she appreciates every one of her clients, but they fly here from different locations of all around the world to, to get her services. Wow. This is unbelievable. Sometimes you really think yeah. like, wait a minute, you spend, and again, you know, it's because once you sit in her chair, it's like it's, it's over from there. She's building something that I don't think that people continue to um, have as a cosmetology um, teacher. She still has the the passion for it, the open salon setting versus the suite, the the knowledge. And, and I don't knock the fact that she she did it from her heart, right? It's just that we have to now pair it with uh, financial gain as well because um, right. it's, it's not a full 1K in, um, in you know, hair, hairstyle, you know? You can only do that mm. for, so, for so long. But she teaches everyone who's just in, in, her, in their chair, in, in her chair. Um, highly sought after by the Commandant Force, our General the Marine Corps. He came, grabbed her by the hand and poured her to a side side room because I'm not sure if you, you gentlemen know, but just a couple of years ago, the military was really going through um, a, a very hard time with ethnic hair and just hair in the military in itself. Those right. bonds that they've been doing for years were making um, patches in the back of women, women's hair, pulling that so tight. And I, I tell you, I've learned so much from her just watching her do this. He pulled it aside and said, teach me what I don't know. Where do I need to go? What do I need to make happen to, to, make, to make sure our female service members have what they need? Teach me about these regulations. And it was, I was in so awe, you know, about, about it. And she was, she's teaching the four-star general. You know what I'm saying? So she can, she humbles, I won't say, I don't know if, the, if I'm saying it the right way, but she talks down to, to not down to, but she's at, she teaches at the level of children to high executive people that advises the president of the United States. And every person in between gets the exact same thing, exact same knowledge. So, I mean, I, I believe in her and the plan is to take this thing to the next level and um, help her help her get into the places where she needs to be to instruct the next generation of dollars and continue to um, educate people on what they don't know about um, health, I mean, not health care, but um, um, hair care. She, that's that's what right. her sayings is, is, um, was it changing, changing? Her knowledge, her care, her, her growth. Yeah. That's my mission. Yeah, her, her, her knowledge. knowledge. Her care, her growth, and, you know, um, I had a slogan at the time, changing, changing lives one, one hair. hair. Yeah, that's what I was. Um, changing I lives one hair, at a, one hair style at a time. And that's what you do. And and we always talk about on this channel, the cheat code to success is uh, a spouse that's 100% supportive. I mean, my wife, you know, Alex's wife, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at without them. I can't sit here. I ain't gonna lie. I'll be, I'll probably be somewhere homeless right now if it weren't for my wife. So I just, that's just honest truth. I always had the hustle in me, but I never had the, the direction of doing it um so having a supportive spouse no matter if it's man supporting woman woman supporting man or whatever that that camaraderie that that building block is 100 percent key because it allows one person to focus on the goal like 
y'all said in y'all situation, you was focusing on the hair care part of it. John came in and worked on the business aspect of it. Like it's like he said, it's so good. It's good to have a passion about something, but it has to meet up with the the financial realm of making it what's better for the whole and the whole is the family. So that's that's a good mantra to go with. So we wrap it up here, but we're gonna do this again because I got like a million more questions, but I don't want to keep long. I know everybody got other engagements out there, but we're gonna do this again because I know people are gonna be like, wait, what the heck? I got this question. I got this question. But yeah. But Rakaya, work on that, getting that hair piece for me, please, because uh, I need it. You know, I'm tired of walking around bald. I've been like this since I was like 20, so I need to, uh, <laughs> I need to get my life together. But All thank right. y'all for you. joining us, and uh, we'll see y'all again soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you guys.